heartbreaking body camera video shows a now convicted killer pretend to search for the teenager he shot and killed days prior. So, what's your name? Don, Don and Jim Brenner. Jim Brenner, the man now convicted in the murder of Dylan Rounds, helped first responders in the search for Dylan after he went missing. Body camera video shows Brenner working with law enforcement as both of Dylan's parents are next to him. And through it all, he makes some eerie statements. And it's just one thing after another. <laughs> and, but he's a friend of mine. Sure. You don't get rid of friends. The newly released video also shows Dylan's parents, who are wary of what Brenner told deputies. This Jim guy says that Dylan has been in town at the bar or whatever, bragging about how much money he makes and this and that. But I talked to him. It doesn't really sound like my son. The story of 19-year-old Dylan Rounds begins on May 28, 2022, when he was last seen. At the time of his disappearance, Dylan was working on his farm in Lucene, Utah, near the borders of Idaho and Nevada. The last person to hear from Dylan was his grandmother. He called her to discuss some farming plans for the day, but after that, he never made another call. Here's Dylan's mom, Candace Cooley. We've spoken to her several times since Dylan disappeared. What led up to Dylan's disappearance? Um, we have no clue that that's the point of a disappearance. You, you can't, if you know what's going to lead up to a disappearance, it's not going to happen. Um, what happened afterwards was, you know, the search, um, all the efforts we did, the specialized teams, the trying to get help from law enforcement, the being shrugged off. Ah, he's just a teenager. He disappeared or he wanted to go party and he'll be back. You know, all that stuff that we knew wasn't true. Um, made the case a lot more difficult. Um, when I speak that L Dylan was literally under our feet in the first couple days, that that is a true statement. And law enforcement just laughed at us. They literally laughed at us. Um, so yeah, leading up to it, we have no clue. There, there was no reason, there was no motive, there's nothing. It was just, uh, on James Brenner's part, a snap moment. Okay, I know you're multitasking when you're watching our videos, and if you're out and about running errands, listen up. I have to tell you about the free app Upside that gets you cash back on daily essentials. It's something I use every time I pump gas because it's so easy and free, so why not? Okay, here's what you do. Get the Upside app and claim an offer for whatever you're buying. So you pay as usual and then follow the steps on the app to get paid. To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen and use our promo code LCNews to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. We're now getting a better idea of what Candace saw during those early searches for Dylan. He went missing on May 28, 2022, and this body camera video was taken just two days later on May 30th. Hi, Candace. Justin Dillon's dad. Hi, Justin Dillon's dad. You can see Candace in this recording and Dylan's father, Justin Rounds. Right away, they begin discussing where Dylan's cell phone last pinged. Right up here at these yards is his last known location. His camper is about four miles back up this way by his pond, and we're really thinking he might have taken off and went across. Because nobody, there's been no phone calls on his phone. Yeah, no. I, I did get a ping. Okay. Last location was 15.4 miles from the phone line tower, okay. which puts him on this back road. So I wonder if his walk, it, would that hit him walking? Okay, that's, I, I really, oh, do, I know my son, and that's the shortest route to his camp. If he walked, that road ends right out here. If he walked, he would come. But that's as close as cell phone peak. Not in town, oh, not, out it's out here. Mm hmm Off of that road. The back road into the compound. Can we go down to where it is? Yeah. It depends out there to old cabin. But that's where the ping was. But that's where the ping was. The ping was. That's... He was out there? Yeah. I... So are you guys... Uh, He's the one to go on. I'm trying to stay on father. Yeah. I'm the guy that's supposed to keep an so, what's your name? Don. Don and Jim Brenner. Jim Brenner. 
Here's where we get introduced to Jim Brenner, Dylan's killer, who at the time of his disappearance was squatting in a trailer on Dylan's property. I've been down to his place twice. Went down yesterday afternoon, looked around. Hadn't been in his bed, his pickup's locked. All the equipment is really supposed to be there. <coughs> is the trailer open? Go. He never locks it, it doesn't lock anyway. But today I took Jim down there with me and we did a little more thorough search. And he wasn't in the camper? It doesn't look like anybody's been around. Nope. It's, it's been raining all and on since Saturday, so any fresh mm -hmm. tracks were kind of moist out. Yeah. If he was on that back road down there, we ought to go look that way. I didn't realize it. I don't know how. Can you guys show us? I mean, we're not. We would do it, though, and with the, he had the green truck. No. Walking. Walking. It, that doesn't mean that's his exact location. That's the closest that's, cell phone That's ping. the last ping for whether he tried to use it or the last location it updated before it died. What time was that? Does it tell you? That was at uh, 14.58. So right after so he So just before 3 o'clock. Right after you left. Yeah. So he must have pulled in right behind you, dropped off the grain truck, and I'm telling you, I, I bet you he took off walking. Another body camera recording shows box elder sheriff's deputies discussing the search, still with Dylan's parents and Jim Brenner. Place. Search and rescue have a drone? Yeah, they got a couple of them. Whether if, if they can fly it in the wind, I don't know. I think it's good up to like 20 mile an hour wind, so this should be fine. And they got four wheelers and all sorts of How toys. How far away are they? When I talked to them to see if they wanted us to come down the road or not, they were just that other side of Snowville Flats. They got any way so of about an hour. Phone? No, they, it went 15.14 miles from the tower southwest, which puts it here, off of that road. Just as you come over the uh, Lucin Pond and use the back way here, it right that in that area. So it would have to be from here. That yep. Way. So somewhere from here that way. But if it died and he kept walking or right. whatever he did, it that's. If it once it's dead. Is there any steep terrain or steep stuff, or is it just this brush? Well, there's a couple of them little washers that are yeah, four or five washes. foot deep. That's Nothing to get fall down. Like I said, I can't picture him doing this. And if he didn't have a ride, he'd do it. Not when it's easier to walk up that road. This no. is this is. Dylan would take a pet across. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, Dylan would, would. take the show. Oh yeah. He, he, he's all about exploring. Yes, he, that's he, what he That he mountain would. over there, Pigeon mm -hmm. Mountain, he's been to the top of that. Yeah. He would definitely walk this. This is nothing for him. Well, I don't... Only other thing we can do is go check his trailer and then meet with search and rescue. Yeah. Here's the first time we get word that something may be off with Jim Brenner. The wind kind of makes it difficult to hear, but Dylan's father, Justin Rounds, tells a deputy that he doesn't trust Brenner. He's gonna blow my head off once. Jim? He's a little crazy. He had a farm and I pulled up The wind gets pretty bad here, but when it dies down, the talk about Brenner continues. I talked to him and I And he him. said search and rescue could park there. Yeah. That was new to me. Usually he does yeah, not like he, us. He is concerned about finding Dylan, so because I didn't think he'd let us on either, and that's I, that's why I called Don. No, I know that some of the neighbors say he's ornery or sometimes he's really nice, other times he's really ornery. That's the only dealings we've had with him, but 
I know we came out here once for a suspicious vehicle and he came out of the trailer with a gun. As soon as he knew it was us, he's like, sorry, I, I'm out here alone. It's like, I, I'd do the same thing, honestly. Well, it's kind of... But I just wanted to make sure he's a little crazy. Okay, good. Yeah, that, I think that's our best bet to back to his place. So that's just what deputies do. Check where James Brenner is staying, and right away, they find something. There's just some boots out there that are, they've only been out there for a day or two. And so some, some boots that, what's his name, would wear. These boots are a big deal in the case because they signaled something was off. Both of Dylan's parents separately told me the same thing. It's because he wouldn't have left his boots there. They weren't old, they weren't bad. I mean, old and worn out for Dylan would be basically his toes sticking through a hole. I mean, it would, there would have been no reason for those boots to have been in my mind at all. But it's when we found the boots. When we found the boots, there is no other explanation for them to be out there besides Brenner put them out there. And the only way you would get Dylan's boots off of him is if he was not alive to keep you from doing it. And that's when we knew. Tests later showed that one of the boots had a blood stain on them, and it was later determined to be Dylan's blood. But back to the search for Dylan alongside James Brenner. So I'm just, you didn't see anybody else around here? I left here about 1.30, between 1.30 and 2, went over to Don's. And I was there until about 9 o'clock at night. And when I came back, that truck was there. Okay. And did, did you know the truck was coming? No. Okay. Dylan, don't tell anybody what he's doing. <laughs> okay. So you weren't here when Dylan came down here. Is that kind of a mutual understanding that he can park stuff down here? Or? Uh, yeah, but he's supposed to let me know about it, you know, a day ahead of time. Because I had all my, I was building a chicken coop in there. I don't know if you've seen it with all my tools on it. Oh, yeah. And I had it right in the middle, so I had light. And he pulled everything out, he knocked my horse corral out. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. So that's your horse on the other side of the yeah. hill here. Okay. I didn't know, that's just the way Dylan is. So I pulled the truck out, I took the wall out that he that he knocked out and uh, put that other panel in there and I backed the truck in straight. Oh, okay. Um, but no, he, that's his truck right there, that fuel truck. That fuel truck is too. Yeah, and he's trying to buy these tractors. Brenner tells the deputy that Dylan, who was only 19 at the time of his disappearance, had been drinking a lot recently. And according to Brenner, it's something he didn't want to tell Dylan's grandparents. I didn't want to say anything to confront him that Dylan's been hanging out in a bar over there because Larry's, Larry's drank once in his life by accident. He was in a, him and his friend were in a Mexican Rick's restaurant, I guess, and they ordered something that said Coke. <laughs> and it totally fucked him up. Oh, and Larry's a good Mormon, you know. He's just a good. He's just a good guy. Um, yeah. And if he knew that, you know, I think he knows now. If he knew Dylan was hanging out in that bar over there all the time, I don't know why the hell they serve him over there. But it's Nevada. They do whatever they want over there. Yeah. Later, Dylan's father says this statement just doesn't add up. Jim guy says that. town at the bar or whatever bragging about how much money he makes and this and that but I talked to and it doesn't really sound like my son but you know I haven't been around him a lot and he's a little older and I didn't know I didn't think he drank either and there's he's still and stuff all in so did this guy was saying that drinking might change how he talks you know what I mean so I don't know I'm not saying but but Dan said that doesn't sound at all like Bill I was like you're just Brag well, Dan life. says when he came into the cowboy bar the other day, I think I've got a drone out there, it looks like. Oh, it's a drone? Yeah. Anyway, um, that he said that when after they branded, they went and he fed everybody at the cowboy bar and he came in and bought a soda pop and left. Back with Brenner, the deputy brings up Dylan's boots. There's two boots out there, they're brand new. Like they're, 
they've only been out there. They're they're the same color leather as your boots, and they're the same ones he wears. So we're just curious of why his boots would be out there. Same size he wears. They've only been out there probably for a day or two. So we're just curious of. Does he ride horses, Dylan? I think he's got a horse, but I don't think he rides, rides it. He likes riding tractors. <laughs> he might have threw them out there. I yeah, don't maybe he did. But he does he know that's a dump out yeah. there? He does? He's got electronics and shit in there. Oh, he does? Yeah, there's. if you dig around in there, you'll find old power inverters that he, he wiped out. Maybe, I don't know. Because like I say, he was here. He had to have been here. He brought the truck here. Yeah, huh, that would make sense. Next, Brenner brings up Dylan's cell phone and where it last pinged. Phone pinged down there. Well, 15.12 miles from Bowie Tower. So, I mean... Yeah, so, I, I mean, but 15.12 miles can be a lot of places, right? You could draw a radius, and anywhere on that radius could be 15.12 miles. Well, so, like I told my grandfather, he goes over the pond. I do, too. That pond has a test ring. Robert dropped his phone over there. He's always losing his phone. Then the deputy walks over to Justin Rounds and brings up the boots again. So Dylan got some new boots, I guess. Uh, that guy he's been working for. So that he's saying that, like that used to be a dump, and out there. it's all. I guess it's buried in. He says Dylan's buried a lot of stuff out there. Do you know anything about that? Like electronics or something like that, circuit boards. No, I don't know anything about any of that. Nobody dumped it there from all the places. Right. So he said that Dylan knew that as a known dump. So what's Dylan's relationship with this place? This place here. He sure. says. So this guy says he had no idea that Dylan was dropping the truck off. They took this truck four months ago, and him and Dan came. With him to bring it back here and brought it to park it here. Right. So he said that. So he, it's been down there. He said that he showed. He came home on Saturday and saw the truck there. I guess he was trying to build a chicken coop in there. And uh, um, I guess they were trying to build a chicken coop in there. And uh, he told me that Dylan backed it in, and it wasn't under the shed. But he hit this horse trail in the back. Yep. Down, so he backed it in. Okay. In that's that's kind of what he told me too. Yeah. He was building some chicken coops and he keeps his horse in there at times. And so, really there. so we followed some footprints. They're his footprints out there. Oops. This guy's footprints. Pretty sure. But so I said, so when was the last time you were out there? And he told me. And so there's horse prince right with me says I was out there catching my horse so that makes a little sense it's those boots just out there that are well, they're like my wife ex-wife said I said well maybe the dog drug him out there she said, well, there's nothing else out here if the dog I mean that would make sense that the dog would go hang out on that pile in the sun you know what I mean right now, there's only two boots there. there's nothing else there. well he that, this guy says underneath that pile of dirt it used to be a dump that they dumped it all everybody dumped their trash in but i don't know when they covered it up but i mean those are those look like they're i didn't look inside the boots they look like they're decent boots still as this recording comes to a close justin rounds describes getting the shocking phone call when he first learned of dylan's disappearance big investigation we can we can't just because we might not know all the answers, and if I tell you, you know what I mean. If I tell you something, then it turns out to be something else. I was on my way back from Vegas, I got a call in Fillmore, Utah. My ex-wife wanted to talk to me and my daughter. My heart sunk right then. Not even because of Dylan. You, <laughs> I don't. I never talked to her. You yet. never talked to her. We don't have a relationship with. So you know what I mean. Sure. So right then, my heart sunk. You know what I mean. Like I thought my youngest one had been in the car wreck or something weird because yeah. she don't talk to me. Yeah, I, I, my it, mom had only been missing since Saturday, but me and my daughter were in 
Jeez. I guess people have been warning him not to hang out at the cowboy bar. I guess. I, I, I guess your dad is a very religious type person, and they were worried about. I guess everybody's been worried about your father finding out that he's been drinking and hanging out with at the cowboy bar with. In addition to the newly released body camera video, we also received an interrogation video of James Brenner's cellmate, James Prophet. Could you have any guess why the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office would maybe want to talk to you about anything? Yeah, kind of. Okay. What's that, you think? My cellie. Who's that? James Brenner. Okay. Why would we want to talk to you about him? Because he's the only one I know that'd be connected to Box Elder. Okay. Do you think you have anything that might be able to help us? Maybe. What's that? Two different locations where a body might be. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where are those? Uh, West Desert. Well, okay. That's helpful. We think he's there, too. Prophet says Brenner is trying to pin Dylan's disappearance on someone named Chase. Why do you believe that? Just by the way he talked to me. Well, what does he say? He, he's trying to put it off on somebody named Chase. And we actually heard that name for the first time from Brenner himself. All righty. Like I say, you don't, you don't go in a bar and brag about how much money you make, especially in that bar. Where does he make this? Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's uh. Chase Vector. Vector. If you look up 2016 in Ogden, the SWAT team was called to his father's house, and when they finally got a warrant to get in there, they didn't find him. When they went back in, he was up in the attic laying in the rafters with insulation over him. So it's Chase Vector. Something like that. Okay. So Change the SIM, SIM card. card. It didn't come off. Oh, okay. But Kurt Wadsworth could tell you more about him than I. Who's have. Kurt Wadsworth? So he's the guy that owns the back of it. But Brenner's cellmate says it wasn't Chase. It was Brenner who killed Dylan. And I know he killed the guy because he was jealous of him. Spoiler: little rich kid is what he called him. Who? Who? That? That? Brent, you using too many pronouns. When you say he killed him, you talking about Brenner killing him or this guy named Chase? Brenner. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Brenner, Brenner, yeah, Brenner, he's told me, yeah, he, he's told me so much of it. Um, and, but I wouldn't stop in the West Desert. I would look inside of a septic tank, a septic tank also. A septic tank? Yeah, a septic tank. Why do you say that? Because he, he come across and told me all these things he's thought about and, and, and checked into and, and, uh, and then he starts laughing and says, you guys could be walking right over top of the uh, body. I don't know. Um, but he said, uh, putting putting a body, because he said he used to work for a company that um, put cows, when cows, when they died, they would cover them with manure. He said that they will eat a body, eat, eat a body up. And he don't want to give up the body just yet because he's afraid it might go federal. Talking about it might be the body might be cross state line. Um, he talked about another spot in a, up there where he he said he lives. He knows it, that if it snows a foot, uh, it, it's supposed to get a foot or two foot of snow up there where he was at. Uh -huh. And if that's it, the search is over. You guys will never find it. It's been going on two years now, and I'm, and I'm just like you know. I listen to it, and, and I don't I don't talk to him about my my case, but. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't talk to him, but he, he has no problem with talking about his. Um, he hasn't. He hasn't given me exact location of a body yet, but I'm sure he will. Why did he say that? Just because he, he takes me to be his friend, um, <clears throat> and I'm not. He's really jealous of the kid, and he wants the parents. He wants the parents to, to admit that they brought up a bad kid. It was his parents' fault, not his. It took until spring 2023 for James Brenner to be charged in Dylan's death. 
According to a probable cause affidavit, investigators recovered a video from Round's phone that led to Brenner's arrest. Court documents read in part, quote, the video showed the defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as he was cleaning a gun. Investigators tested the shirt Brenner was wearing in that video and found Dylan's DNA on it. A plea deal was in the works for more than a year, with Brenner finally pleading guilty back in May. Mr. Um, Brenner, in that case, has to count one murder, a second degree felony to that charge. How do you plead? Guilty. As part of the plea, Brenner's charge of aggravated murder, a first degree felony, was reduced to murder, a second degree felony. An additional charge of desecration of human remains, a third degree felony, was dismissed. As another part of the plea, Brenner finally led investigators to Dylan's remains. After this, I spoke with Dylan's mother, Candace Cooley, once again. Did this sentencing bring you or your family any sort of closure? You know, we already knew what was going to happen. We already knew months ago that this is exactly what it was going to be. Um, I think what it did is it took the giant elephant out of the room that we don't have to sit there and anticipate, man, we got to go to court next week. We got to go to court in two days. We got to go face him again. Um, I think it takes a lot off your shoulders. As far as closure, there's never closure, but this is a closed chapter now. And now we move on to the next chapter. And that's with helping others. How does it make you feel that throughout all of this, the pre-sentencing, what you said, the discussions ahead of time before the plea, all of that, that throughout all of this, Brenner has said, uh, it was Dylan's fault. I'm not taking accountability for this. How does that make you and Dylan's family feel? You know, looking back through his past and his criminal cr history that's crisscrossed the country since the 80s, it's not as... Um, shocking as it would be if this was his first offense like this is what he's always played is it's not me it's not me i'm the victim i'm the victim um so knowing that history now it's not as shocking as it would be but i do sit there and i think how how in your mind can you even try to justify this like i understand your mind doesn't function properly and you're somewhat you know not stable but still how how do you even wake up in the morning and think, nope, it was Dylan's fault? Um, I just, I don't understand. Because of the plea deal, the case's judge was required to give Brenner a sentence of one to 15 years on each charge. I think the three words that I heard through the letters came through with what was described here, builder, dreamer, visionary. I don't believe you are those in any respect. That's unfortunate. I wish I could do something more. I understand when this plea was offered and was taken, it was with the consent of the family uh, in an effort to bring closure. So there is nothing more that I can do other than what has been agreed upon. Based on the two, three second degree felonies, it will be the order of the court that you serve one to 15 years on each one of those. Those are run consecutive. Uh, I will give you credit for the time you've served only on those two cases, 171 and 110, no other cases. How do you feel about the sentence? I know that was part of the deal, but what do you make of it? So I, I feel a lot better about it. Uh, now than I did, you know, the three to 30 is definitely not justice. The one to 15 for Dylan is absolutely not justice. But to hear the judge say that he has already put his recommendation into the parole board that they keep him as long as they legally can. He basically just got sentenced to 30 years without that being the sentence. Um, the judge, he holds a lot of weight. Um, that is that is a bold statement and for him to say, I wish I could give you more. Um, all the letters we wrote into the parole board already, yes, those are going to be taken into consideration, but this is a judge's recommendation. Like, I would give this guy life if I could, but I can't. So here, Utah State Parole Board, you uphold this for me since I was unable to do it. So um, hearing him say those words was uh, a huge relief. He's, he's never going to get out. He will never get out, not with a judge's recommendation like that. As for Dylan's family, they're working to make sure his memory is also kept alive through the Dylan's Legacy Foundation. 
Yeah, so Dylan's Legacy, um, we paired up with Missing an American Network, and we've already done some things. We brought some young men home alive. We've recovered some remains with our canine team that Dylan's Legacy has funded. Um, I'm dealing with moms in cases across the country, and and I hear I hear their voices. I understand where they're at, and you know we've a lot of awareness. Um, Jarrett Brooks out of Utah, we have been pushing on that one hard. He's a minor and the family's just not getting any help. And it's a year tomorrow he's been missing. And so working with his family, trying trying to get some attention, um, you know, unfortunately, we fell into so many trolls and so much craziness in Dylan's case because you don't know what you don't know, period. That's what it boils down to. And so we're trying to be that education that these families don't get taken advantage of by these false canine teams, false YouTubers, all this stuff that actually hurts a case more than it helps it. Um, we're just crisscrossing the country with awareness and helping others. and. Um, it's it's been good and we've done a lot of good we just we respect the families and if they want us to put it out there what we've done we do and if they don't we don't and and that's okay um it's all about the families uh not about what we do but what we do for them as part of a sentence brenner will spend at least three years in prison and faces a maximum of 30 years behind bars for long crime i'm sierra gillespie